Hello, I'm Chris Clamp and welcome to my studio. I'm very excited to talk with you today about my work, some of my underlying themes and inspirations, my background, and some upcoming projects. I'm originally from Batesburg, Leesville, South Carolina. Uh, it's a very small town, primarily based around agriculture and textile mills. Uh, there's still one textile mill there functioning. My mom and dad and many of my other family members uh, all worked there. The, the primary uh, thing that they make is velvet, actually. Uh, my mom and dad, they both worked very, very strange shifts uh, to really kind of help keep food on the table. Um, my dad primarily worked second shift and my mom had worked third. So what that means is my dad worked an evening shift and mom worked the night shift. So they didn't see each other until the weekends, but that made sure that my brother and I had someone home to help take care of us whenever we were not, when we were home from school. My grandparents also were very integral in raising us as well. Uh, my grandmother and grandfather at that time were tending to their garden and their farm primarily. And uh, my brother and I, we both helped my, um, Grandfather was one of those type of people that often would speak in, in uh, metaphors and parables in a way where there was a lesson to be learned by listening hard and, and, and understanding some story about uh, what was happening around us and how the animals were, were interacting with one another or the way the wind changed, just a variety of things. He also interested me because he collected all these strange items that he would find on the side of the road or at um, places in which you would take your garbage to, to be discarded. Uh, things that were like old tools and old toys. I always found them very fascinating when I was a kid and would play with them or use them in some other uh, design project that I would give myself. And, um, and to this day, it's very interesting because many of these objects pop up in my work. When I visit my family, I will often take a moment to go visit his old barn and we'll find something that will uh, emerge in, in, in my paintings as uh, a very important still life element that, that, may have a, that might have a story to convey to the audience. I went to Winthrop University uh, after graduating high school. I originally was interested in going for art education, but uh, immediately fell in love with the studio program there. Several of the uh, studio teachers really were heavily inspirational to me, seeing how hard they were working, that they were exhibiting in galleries and museums. And many of my teachers had residencies at uh, what was then called the Tryon Center for Visual Arts, which is now known as the McCall Center for Arts and Innovation. It, it, I would visit them in their studios and I was amazed with the program and the studio space, the facilities, and the access that it gave these artists, my teachers, uh, to a greater community. And I saw the growth in their work and I was so fascinated about it. Um, I, I dreamt of being there, but I never thought I'd have the opportunity to have a residency. Um, however, last in the summer of 2019, I did have a residency at the McCall Center and it was a wonderful experience. I decided to focus on a small body of work that were single object uh, paintings and the single objects would just be heavily focused and um, built along the narrative of object as portrait. And that was the story that the title I was giving the paintings. Uh, these objects came from uh, my family again, um, but also friends had given me some of these objects to paint. Uh, and it was kind of heavily based on the ideas of ritual, how many of us have uh, a, a daily or morning ritual that we might do. And um, maybe this is something that is that we've done for a very long time. Um, and a lot of times these objects are things that, that we um, leave a bit of our um, energy in, or the object, um, holds a lot of that energy. And as, uh, an example I give is my, my mom, like many of your parents, probably 
Uh, my mom drinks coffee every day, many, many, many times a day, and she has a cupboard full of coffee mugs. However, there is one coffee mug that she, that she essentially uses, and this coffee mug is the thing that, that it's her. Whenever I see this mug, I'm, oh, that's, that's my mom. And there's other objects that I have that I've held on to that are friends and family members of mine that, that this object is their portrait. The power of the still life object is something that I just find so uh, just inspiring. It's something that is so simple and commonplace and something that um, everyone can relate to. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to experience these wonderful moments at gallery openings of my work where someone will come up to me and tell me a story about their childhood or some family member they had because this object sort of sparked this memory that was probably forgotten to them, but it, but it helped it resurface and it was a magical moment and they told me some story uh, from their, their youth or their background that this thing, this object, had some sort of part of. So in my work, I like to keep it vague enough. These things are, are um, personal to me and there is a bit of a narrative involved, but I wanted to be open-ended and vague enough that everyone can come to these paintings and the paintings are their paintings, that they are bringing their relationship to these objects and their background and they're having their own experience. And I just find that so magical.